Hey, I'm Rob Jones, and in this month's feature, I'm going to show you iMachine, an iPhone app which is a cut-down version of Native Instruments Machine. With there being one or two different sequencing and beat-making apps available already, I was interested to see what would make this app stand out, and whether it was essentially just a toy, or something that could actually integrate effectively with my studio. Named the Groove Sketchpad, iMachine first loads with the default drum pad screen, from where you can immediately start bashing out beats. The default kit to load is called Fat Cash, and it's a great one for making heavy breaks, so that's what I immediately had to do. I did this by upping the tempo to 130 BPM, hitting the record button, and then bashing something out after the count-in. Hitting the record button a second time stops recording and starts looping, with the software intelligently working out how long to loop, so you don't need to be precise. The software also includes a quantize function, turned on and off in the tempo window, so the drums will automatically be on the beat even if you're slightly out of time. Then you can work out which pad to play next, and then hit record when you're ready to add it to your break. If you're not happy with a the part, then you can use the software's undo function to erase what you just recorded. Some additional features you have here are activated using the other switches along the bottom. So there's a roll mode button, which allows you to select a note length, after which pressing and holding a pad creates a roll of repeated notes of that length. Then there's a velocity mode, where you can set the default velocity for a pad, or use the live play strip to create a drum sequence with changing velocity to give it more of a live feel. Other editing functions include the ability to double the groove if you want to create a longer break, as well as enter mute or erase mode. Mute mode is fairly self-explanatory. You simply click on pads to mute and unmute them. Erase mode is very similar, only you erase a particular pad by clicking and holding on it, after which it will erase any MIDI notes recorded on that pad at that particular time so it's good for erasing one or two of the drum hits in a sequence, rather than the whole lot. This erase mode is very useful. As iMachine has no grid or viewable MIDI sequencer, it'd be extremely hard to make small changes without it. Let's switch to a new kit now to try out some other sounds. We do this by pressing the search button. How about something acoustic this time, like the Studio Kit? The buttons on the right side of the bottom strip include a sample edit or record facility. To record a sample, you just hit record and make some noise. Which then replaces the sample on the selected pad with your new recorded one. Then, in edit mode, you can change the pitch of the sample. As well as the level and panning. Then, there are two switches below for adjusting one-shot mode and choke. Turning off one-shot means that the sample will only sound whilst the pad is pressed, and will stop when you let go, instead of playing the whole way through no matter how long you press the pad for. And turning on choke will make the sample cut as soon as another sample also set to choke sounds. For example, the hats on this studio kit are both set to choke, so that the open hat stops when the closed hat sounds, which makes the sound a lot tighter and more realistic.
as well as allowing you to change the whole kit. The browser also allows you to change the samples on each pad so you can mix and match to get the sound right. The great thing about iMachine, however, is that this is only the beginning. There are actually four different tracks in the app, each of which can be set to one of three different modes. The drum pads we've just been looking at, a basic sampler, or an audio recorder. We'll go back to the first beat I made to look at this. So to switch to a different track now, I just press one of the blue buttons labelled B, C or D. The default mode for the three other tracks is to have B and C in sampler mode and D in audio recorder mode. However, if I press and hold one of the buttons, then I can change that track to whatever I like. You'll notice on that display that there's a Save Instrument button too, so you can store your instrument settings for later. In sampler mode, you have two octaves of a keyboard on the screen for playing melodies, with a transpose slider above for moving up and down the MIDI note range. So if I wanted to record a bass line now to go with the beat, then I could just open the browser and choose the bass folder in the instrument list and pick one from there. Then hit record and play a melody for as long as I like. If I make it longer than the beat, then it will just loop to account for this. And then you can carry out all the same editing functions, like erasing any notes by going into erase mode, or changing the instrument or individual sample the notes play. And I can repeat the process to add a lead, and even record a vocal or any other instrument. And then once I'm done, I can use the mixer display to adjust levels, bring parts in and out, and even add effects. Pressing the mixer button switches to mixer mode, after which you have levels for each track, along with mute switches below. And then two buttons above for sending tracks to one of two global insert effects. These can be set to chorus, flanger, delay, lo-fi, which is a beat crusher, as well as one of three filters. So there are a few different options for processing sounds. And don't forget the all important swing control for adding shuffle. When you're done, you can save your groove by pressing the main menu button so you can reload it at a later date. Or even export it, which allows you to upload the audio straight to SoundCloud, or create a file on board which can later be dragged out of iTunes and loaded up on Machine, or Machine Micro, so you can carry on working on it. And this is the thing that makes iMachine more than just a toy. Not only is it a pretty comprehensive and fun app by itself, but you can also use it to create grooves which can actually become the beginnings of a track providing you have one of the hardware versions of Machine, of course. Plus, the sample import facility means you can save yourself a lot of studio time spent auditioning samples in a new pack by doing it on the move. You just drag the samples from the new pack into iTunes. And then, the next time you boot up iMachine, you can select to import them, after which they'll appear in the user options for samples that can be loaded onto pads or keys in the app. So although there are ways they could improve the system, perhaps making sample transferring more cloud-based, or expanding the sequencer side of things a little to allow for more editing and performance possibilities, as it is, it's a great app for getting down ideas and trying out grooves, which can then become the starting point next time you're in the studio. And it's therefore an excellent step forward towards speeding up workflow and saving time, which are all too important in the busy lifestyles of most musicians. Now, I just need to get my hands on machine, Bye for now.